Hello everyone, it's November 1st, 2022, and I'm here to do a market recap. So for today, the SPY opened really hot. It went, had a gap up. So from the daily chart, the SPY opened all the way up here, 390.23, and that is without the news. And of course, the SPY does not necessarily have to move. So the move that it did today um, was a gap fail. So meaning it got up at the open 390 over or 390.15 and it filled the gap. And once it had filled the gap from this previous candlestick as well as this candlestick, it just turned all the way down to 383 and now has a little bit of a bounce to 385. So the SPY is still down by 0.32% and we're seeing a little bit of a pop this afternoon. So I traded a couple of stocks today. First is Roku. Roku, I did a swing trade as well on Roku. So that's why at the open, I just sold my shares right here. So let me turn off my pre-market data. So with Roku, I had 400, like around 480 shares swing, swinging this. My entry was looking at the weekly, which is what I usually do if I'm swinging. So my entry here was 55.19. And when I saw it open all the way to 58.7, I sold my shares at 58.12. I'm actually holding 400 shares again with this and i'm planning to have that as a swing trade so they're having earnings tomorrow and i really like how the stock had been bitten down for quite a while uh, i also have this one in my long-term account and if you look at the weekly chart the last time that this stock was in that price was back in let's see here 2020 and at the same time back in 2019 so my long term before i have it my entry around 70 and i was able to sold it around here so I am planning to swing trade um, 400 shares. So swing trade for me is less than a week. And yeah, that's the plan right there. And then the next one that I traded was VRNS. VRNS was the trade for the day, just because this one was the easiest trade among all these stocks that I traded. So the strategy that I did here was it was opening or at the pre-market, it was more than 3% gap down and specifically 34.7% down today. So that gives me a good setup to do because that is one of my gap down setup so when i miss this entry right here for an opening range breakdown and for an opening range breakdown if we turn on that pre-market opening range breakdown is basically just breaking the low of the pre-market or breaking the low of the um of the opening and the low of the opening is at this 17.73 so that wasn't really a good opening range breakdown but i was trading roku at that time so i missed this trade so what i did here is turning this one off so since i am short bias on this i am waiting for a signal for me to short it and when i saw that it is a weak stock i entered here short i got stop out entered here short again added to my position so that 17.84 was able to have that scalp trade up to 17.68 and then paying attention to the volume volume has been a medium size this one by the way is in the short selling restriction just because it had got down more than 10 percent at the open so that is the way for the stocks um, stock market to make sure that the stock doesn't crash. Um, when I saw that it had been trending higher and losing the momentum at the VWAP as well as that 9 EMA, I shorted it here, had a conviction that this one is going lower just because when I was looking at the one minute short, you can see here, this is what we call the volume anomaly. So in one minute short, the conviction that I saw here that it's going down is, and this is the reason why I re-entered. So this is my first trade here. The second trade is this. So thought process is, when I saw this big candlestick, and I'm looking at the volume right here, so that candlestick correlates to this volume right here. Did you see how tiny that volume is? It's just 77,000 shares. That tiny volume is about the same as this volume right here from the previous. And if you compare that candlestick right here with the same amount of volume to the same amount of volume here, and look at how tiny this candlestick is. Same amount of volume, but those are the tiny candlestick. So this is, that is a sign of anomaly. Well, it's happening is market maker are trying to um, trap those who are trying to do this uh, long and putting that big candlestick there, trying to deceive, you know, traders that, oh, this is going to rip higher, where in fact the volume is dying. So that is what we call volume price analysis. If you look at the volume and you compare it from the rest of the candlestick, you will see the anomaly there because this is a medium sized volume with a big candlestick. So as soon as I saw that anomaly, I shorted it here, added to my position. As soon as it lost that VWAP, moving average, added to my position, added to my position. Of course, at this point, my stop loss is at 18.08. It took a while for this to consolidate, but I was pretty confident about this trade because the candlestick going higher has no volume at all. So when I saw that it is not even able to go higher past through 18.05, so that's the strong conviction that this stock is going to even bleed out and go lower. 
So at, this is the time where it just moved in my direction. So once it lost the VWAP, then it lost its moving average, the, uh, the 9, the 20, and all the way down. So I covered my position right here at the wick. That was 50% of my position. And then the other 50% is the sign of reversal. And true enough, that hammer candlestick formed that pop and I got stop out right here. And that's the good thing about having a stop loss. Because if you move your stop loss all the way down, then you will not experience the pain right here because this one just squeezed. Now I did not trade this one again just because there's so much anomaly with the volume. Now this one has lower probability that this is going to go lower just because now the volume is different. Now you have the big volume with a big volume bar. So I'm not sure whether this one is going to go higher or bleed down again. And sure enough, it did bleed down again, but I was trading a different stock that time. And I was pretty much happy with trading Amazon as well because I caught a little bit of reversal in the Amazon. Amazon opened very weak today. And what I did was wait for, see here, so that's VRNS Roku. And then for the Amazon, Amazon trade, if you look at the weekly, it is at that all time low for the past couple of months. So the last time we were on that level was back in March 23, 2020. So that was two years ago. So thought process here is it's a very weak stock. It did touch that low of that two days low. And once it touched that two days low, it still went past through it. So the play that I did here was a reversal one. So it opened at 104 and just bleed down all the way to 96.9. I traded this one a couple of times. So first is I trade a reversal. So when I saw that this one, this volume right here, this one is a hot key mistake. Um, yeah, with my um, yeah hot key mistake there. So when I see that the volume is so high at this um, price right here, so what happens there is the volume is high. That means those trade right here, those sellers are absorbed by the volume. So that's indicator as well that once it gets absorbed, we can see I reversal there or a rip higher there. So once I see that volume right there, waited for confirmation for reversal. And what I use is the 15 minutes. So in the 15 minutes, I saw that doji right there. So I entered long a bit early. The perfect entry could have been right here at that break of that can, um, hammer, but was confident with that, you know, absorption of that big volume there. So I entered here, added to my position, covered my position here uh, because we are heading lower. So trailing my stop and then entered long again covered my position, entered long, covered my position. So with a little bit of a move, I was able to get 500 on that. And then the thing that did not work out for me is the Apple trade. Apple trade, what I was uh, looking for for an Apple was a reversal. So it just ripped lower all the way at the open. I thought we were gonna have a reversal here. So tight stop loss and got me stop out. So a small loss there. And then the CCL, CCL, I thought this one is gonna do an opening range breakout. So entered long here at the break of the VWAP and I got stop out. And then I tried another one. Um, a 9 EMA. So with that hammer, I entered long and I got stop out again. Now entered long, was able to catch a move, but it was just a uh, couple of shares. So did not get um, you know, much from that move. But yeah, small uh, loss there. And then in between, I was waiting for uh, catch to, you know, to go to the long side. So entered long, covered my position, long, covered my position, and then here, long again, and it was flat. So I just exit my position. Um, the reason why I did that was if you look at the weekly chart for NEO, I was waiting for a breakout. It has a good volume, but not a lot of conviction. So um, thought processes, if I entered here, then stop loss right here, then there's a possibility that it can run, but it did not. So I am ending my day with uh, 1800 um, on the trade. Again, this Roku is a swing trade. Um, they're having earnings tomorrow, and I'm willing to hold this for less than a week. And yeah, I really like it because if I look at the weekly chart, it had that was able to break this consolidation right here. So entry is at that break of the consolidation and stop loss would be right here. So, and if you go back to how far this one can go, um, yeah, the last time it was on that price was 2020 and also back in 2019. So, uh, yeah, very good company. So I'm willing to have that couple of shares into the close and up to um, yeah the end of the week. So I hope you had a green trading day. And as always, I'll see you at the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye. Good morning, guys. It's one second before the market opens and I just finished my watch list. Um, that's why I have got up significantly today. So I will just wait for my setup to form. Now all my got up lists, I am watching CVNA. This one could have been a good opening range breakout. A bit late to the party. Uber as well had a very good cup up. So I'll wait for the pullback here. Um, Pfizer or PFE, just a small position here, just an opening range breakout.
Okay, so I have this swing trade on Roku. They're actually gonna have earnings tomorrow. So I am just um, making this run. Um, so far, it's heading to, um, yeah, to my direction. So got 1820 already for that. And let's see, CCL. Um, I started a small position there, but let's see here. Uh, I was expecting an opening range breakout, which doesn't look like um, there's not a lot of imbalance in the level two as well as the tape. So I don't like that part. Um, okay, so this one is not ready yet. So I got a small loss on that CCL trade 142. Um, Roku here is working. This has a good gap up there, so can have a pullback. Okay, so just I, I just exited my position in Roku. I don't want to be part of that pullback. So with that, 1566. What is this guy doing? This guy is at the VWAP. CCL can be an opening uh, range uh, breakdown right here. And it's going to do a small position here. CBNA is very strong. Uber as well. Good opening range breakout in the VWAP play. Can't step out at CCL. So all the stocks now are doing the gap fill. So filling that gap, just like what Spy is doing. 